you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. We are asked to find the maximum angle for which this light ray incident on the end of the light pipe is subject to total internal reflection along the walls of the pipe. Kind of a mouthful, but basically what's happening is the light ray is striking this end and it's going to refract and travel in to the light pipe and then it's going to strike the boundary between the pipe and the air, and we want what is known as total internal reflection at this juncture right here. So essentially that means the light ray will not refract out into the air. It will actually stay within the pipe. Let's redraw the picture to get a closer look. So once again, we have an incident light beam that refracts into the light pipe and then strikes the boundary and strikes it at the so-called critical angle. What we're actually going to do is find this critical angle first using the critical angle formula, of course. Normally a textbook would put n2 in the numerator and n1 in the denominator. We just have to understand that the light originates inside the light pipe, at least in this portion of the picture. It originates inside the light pipe, that would be medium one, and then it's attempting to refract outside into medium two, so we would denote that with a two. Outside the light pipe is air, so instead of saying n2, we've said n air and then instead of N1, we said N pipe. The N of air has a value of one, you can look that up in your textbook, and then the value for the pipe is 1.36 as given in the question. So we'll plug in those values to get the so-called critical angle. And when we compute this, we get approximately 47.3 degrees. Now that's not the answer, that's the value for theta C as it's marked in the diagram. We can see that we have a right triangle here, and so we should be easily able to solve for theta sub r because the three angles of any triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. And so we'll plug in the value that we just found for theta c. And then through a little bit of simple algebra, you should be able to figure out that that theta r is roughly 42.7 degrees. Again, not the final answer. That's the angle marked right here with theta r. We can finally find what we're looking for, this incident angle, or theta sub i, by using Snell's law, because we have a light beam that's refracting from one medium to another medium, and so that would indeed follow Snell's law. So here is Snell's law. We're going to go ahead and plug in some known values. Notice that the index of refraction of medium one would be that of air, because the light beam is now originating in the air and so that we said has a value of one. We don't know theta i, so we're just gonna keep that as our unknown. The index of refraction of the material was given to us again as 1.36, and then we just figured out the theta sub r is 42.7 degrees. And this one really doesn't matter, so you can eliminate that. And then what you can do is take the inverse sign of both sides to get the angle that we're looking for. And when you do that, you should get roughly 67.3 degrees. That is indeed the final answer for the angle that is incident on the end of the light pipe. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. You can send in your own question to this email address and I will do my best to answer it on YouTube.